guys, it's Mike Everest here from the 10th Essex Living History Group. Today we're going to be looking at our Great War Basics videos and we're going to be having a look at how to assemble your 08 webbing. A couple of the guys in the comments section of the Blanco video were looking at how to assemble their webbing, so we're going to be taking a look at that today. All right, so in front of me I've got a full set of 08 webbing and we're going to be taking a look at this at how it all goes together. All right, and I've got a set here that's um, parts of Old Military History Workshop and uh, Soldier of Fortune. So we're going to be taking a look at all of this and how to put it together. First things first, let's introduce it all. First things, we've got this part here. This is the waist belt. These are cross straps. These are pouches. This will be a left hand pouch as marked by the large letter L. And this will be a right hand pouch, consequently marked by the large letter R. Okay, now, We've also got a haversack, spuriously often referred to as a small pack. Do not, it is a haversack. And this, the old fella here, is our valise, also referred to as a large pack. This is a valise. We have an entrenching tool cover, and a bayonet frog, okay? And that's already connected to our bayonet health, okay? To our um, entrenching tool health. And we're finally, have our water bottle. Now, we're gonna start by putting this together. We're gonna to start with our cross straps. So, here we go. When you build your cross straps, you'll have these little brass hooks here, and these are what you're gonna to attach your haversack or your valise to. So here we go. I'm gonna make sure which direction this is gonna go in. And this is going to go this way. So we make sure when we're constructing it that the little tabs on your waist belt are pointing towards you. So that goes through there. Comes down to here. Now I've already marked mine with pencil and that's something that they recommend doing in the original training manuals as well. Okay. If you're trying to do this by looking at the original training manual, you'll realize it's basically just an angry guy with a mustache looking at you. And it's really hard to work out what's going on. So this is why we're gonna try and make this as easy as possible. So that's our first cross, uh, cross strap in place. And we're gonna put our second cross strap in place now. Make sure I got it roughly the right way. in position there. Now, the important thing to know with the cross straps, just take those patches out of the way. The important thing to know with the cross straps is that they cross, okay? They will not do their job properly unless they are crossed. If you are wearing them just like a pair of braces that go up and over, that is not doing the job that they're designed for. And we know from experience, Mike, who's on the camera right now, had to march nine miles across the Somme with uncrossed straps and an enormous amount of pack weight on him. And that really, really messed his back up. So make sure that they are crossed, okay? It seems a pretty rudimentary thing to do, but you'd be surprised. All right, so the next position we're gonna put on, take the belt ends and bring them together to familiarize yourself with your left and your right. Be aware that you will lose track of this very, very quickly, okay? So you've got to imagine this is now facing outwards, All right? So what we're going to attempt to do is this is going to come over like this. And then the other one is going to come over here and they're going to connect to the ammunition pouches that are going to be on the front of our webbing. So here we go. We're going to do the ammunition pouch on this side first. So we take this like this and we connect this. So making sure that it's rolling towards you like that. We take this here and we connect that, as you can see, going through there. 
it comes down like that. And that is now securely in position. We're then gonna take that, put that over there for a moment, okay? Similar with this one, making sure it's like this. That comes through. So for me, I've already marked it. If you see those pencil lines there, I've already marked it. So that comes through. Looks like this. Make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, so we'll take those pouches out of the way for a second before we do our next sequence. Right, okay, now we've got the pouches out of the way, we are going to now assemble the pouches onto the main waist belt. So remembering that, that is the front of the waist belt. So for 1914, what we need to do is we need to connect the waist belt coming through like this, okay? On the left hand side, so that will be marked with an L for these ones. We will need to additionally place the bayonet frog in that position as well. It gets quite busy on the left hand side in 1914. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring this around. Make sure I'm doing this right. So make sure we get the C-clips like this. That's there, those are C-clips. Then, and then pop that, that comes through there. You can you see where it's coming through? Now we take the bayonet like this. Now to get this through, don't use a pair of pliers or anything like that, muscle around with it. Take it like this, fold it so it's like that. And this will give you a fighting chance of getting that through. That comes through like this. And you can see that's now fitting there. Make sure that is now sat. You can see that. We're going to take that over like that. Take this like that. And muscle it into those C clips. Now, C clips over time will bend. They're pretty strong brass, but they will bend. So it's worth getting a pair of pliers on them so they hold in position. I'm probably going to do that with these at some point as well. Okay. So that is now in position. So you can see, let's get a nice clear shot of that. So you can see it goes C-clip, strap. This thing here comes down and under and connects onto this little pop rivet there, pop up there. And the same goes for that one there. That's now on. Again, old pop rivets, so these will be a little bit degraded over time. So that is what we've got there on our left-hand pouch. So it's getting quite busy there. It's gonna get even busier as well because we're gonna put another piece of equipment attaching to this as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna hook that there. And all will be revealed as to how this works shortly. Okay. So, because we're doing 1914, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that bayonet frog, that bit there, is just shifted over slightly so it's between those two straps, okay? That's quite important because of what we're about to put on next. So what we're now gonna put on next is the haversack, okay? And the haversack is gonna connect. This is our haversack, and this is gonna connect. It's just gonna look like a big pile of green at the moment. But these two sections here, this one here and this one here, will connect outside of the bayonet. Now that seems like it's counterintuitive, but that's how they were doing it for March order, okay? March order in 1914 is pretty much battle order, which is totally bananas. So this is an important distinction to make. You'll notice on the back of the webbing belt, this part here, so roll that over, that is a cross strap. That's gonna be an important strap there. And we'll look at that, what that's gonna do in a second. But this internal strap is going to connect to our haversack. That goes there. 
and we've got our connected on there now. All right, okay. Okay, next up is the right hand pouches and these are gonna get connected to the right hand section of the belt and the entrenching tool as well. And at the same time, we're gonna put on the water bottle carrier as well. So we need to put this through. Now there's no bayonet to get super busy with over here. So I'm not too worried about how this works. So I'm gonna open this up. Now this is a little trickier because you've got this big buckle system here, but we just have to muscle that through like that. And that's gonna wiggle its way along. Connects there. Now this does feel quite busy when it's on there, but rest assured, everything should be fine. Now with 1914 pattern or March pattern, you may have to pull a little bit more shoulder strap through, which you'll have to match on the far side as well. I'm just gonna be out, just slightly out shot there. So that's now in position. Let's get those C-clips tidy. Let's get those position, those poppers in. Now there's two ways to do this. The first way is with the entrenching tool, head in position like this. On there, this gets connected up here. This is where it does feel very, very busy with this stuff. But for the most part, most reenactors will be doing events that, uh, that you'll need your stuff in 16 order, most of them. So um, sort of first days of the song and things like that. There are lots of guys out there who do 08 for uh, nice, sharp, tidy parade stuff. So we're gonna hook that out of the way. That then comes on there. That. And this one goes on here. Like this. Again, this will feel very busy. And there's a reason why it changes. Okay, so that's all locked in now. Last bit is we've got to put the valise on. Now, this is where it gets pretty tricky. And what you would normally do is you're gonna flip the entire rig over. So, here we go. Satisfying thud. Okay. Valise. Big old lump there. So first thing we have to do is take the straps that we got over these are gonna hook into here. Now, these will be used for connecting things like blankets and helmets and stuff too, um, if you're doing marching order, but it'll be just blankets if you're doing stuff for the uh, for the start of the war for 1914. Just gonna flip that over, there we go. So those get hooked over like that. So, two tabs here. These two tabs here are gonna to connect to these two buckles here. Going go through. This large pack, this valise I've got here is actually a World War II large pack, but pretty much does the same thing. And there we go. That's connected there, so you can see that now, locked in. Right, and then we've got for this part here, these locked down like that, nice and tight, and this is the really tricky bit. You'll have some little tabby bits sticking off the back of your webbing that you might think you've got no purpose for them. Well, these are gonna to connect to these. So this is gonna be a real trick, okay? And once you get those in there like that, one locks in. And one locks on like this.
And that is your March order or your 14 order. Right, let's get that turned into something a little bit more sensible where we look at um, 1916 and the Somme onwards. They're gonna start changing their webbing pretty much immediately. The uh, entrenching tool cover, uh, there are pictures from Mons with the entrenched tool cover covering the bottom, uh, covering the behind, which we will show you how to do in a second. Um, the haversack largely stays on the side until 15 when they're moving into the trenches and the valise gets dropped at every available opportunity, okay? Right, let's have a look at putting it into 16. Okay, right, let's, um, let's head into the trenches. Uh, when you get into the trenches, everything changes, march order goes out the window and by and large, when you're hitting into 16, there'll be lots of changes going on um, as Kitchener battalions flush in. You're losing the really super strict regimental look of the um, of the regular army, and you'll have soldiers who'll be wearing their webbing in slightly individual ways. You'll also be encountering pattern 14 leather equipment, the devil's own stuff. Um, it's uh, an interesting and very, very iconic look, uh, which we're not going to be covering today. So. Main thing about changing from March order, or that 1914 battle order, into stuff like the, from the first day of the Somme. First day of the Somme, as you may have guessed, is probably one of the um, kind of bits of the uh, the war that I kind of focus on, particularly with the 10th Essex, um, on account of the fact that was their first proper main discrete set piece battle. They were involved in, from May 1915, in fact, but the, this was um, July 1st was their was their big deal. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we take three parts off. Have a sack. Entrenched tool cover, just a bit of Nubial dust coming out there, and the water bottle holder. The valise backpack is gone. We take that off for the moment. That's not. We're not going to worry about that. This is for us advancing towards the enemy. Okay. So what do we need to put on, and where do we need to put it? This is the important bit. We are going to put on first. We're going to put on our entrenching tool cover. Moving from the side. To the, uh, to the behind, this is a big thing that happens. Um, there are a few people who are wearing it like this during the, um, during the start, of the, uh, during the early days of the Great War, but really, by 1916, pretty much everybody's going like this. So let's move that out of the way. This attaches, and this is going to attach onto the ones that are closest to you, okay? So this is going to connect into the, um, uh, the straps that are the closest to you. So what we do, so we fold that through, like this and the head it should be fairly obvious, but the you want the um, the actual the, the the head to be opening so your right hand can reach around and grasp it. Okay, so we're going to pull that through. And these have quite a tricky little way of doing it. There you go. That's locked in there. Second one locked in. Okay, all right, that's the next one. All right, water bottle next. So, move that out of the way for a second. We've got these two, that's on your right hand side. So water bottle stays on your right hand side. Move that there. This comes here. Again, it's now using what you could easily refer to as the outside strap, as it were there. This one connects in like this. You'll notice again, I've got those markings there, that's from use and pencil markings as to where my stuff sits on me. That's a big thing. And they're very much um, encouraging that, um, even according to the manual in the early days of the war, just a, they call it a fine pencil mark. We're kind of rubbing it really hard into there. Okay, so we've got those in position there. Then we're gonna put the haversack on and the haversack connects onto these pieces here. So we're just gonna flip this over for a second. Right, so have a sack. These are the two important bits here. I've marked them again with pencil markings for mine. They're quite faint. But uh, we now connect them. Like this. So the easiest way to remember about these little teeth, these brass teeth here, is have them facing towards your neck. So you want the break, the broken bit here facing towards your neck. There's a bunch of sort of proper 
war nomenclature to these, but the broken bit, so the bit that's open up towards your neck. Don't have them facing the other way, otherwise it won't work properly. There we go, it's gonna fold through like that. You can see there. Now that is in position. I wear that quite high on my back. You'll see some people uh, will use the, see the little tags here. They will connect them up to these things here. Um, try doing that with, a, with any form of a body type that's not from 100 years ago. It's very, very difficult, okay? So they will go uh, if you are of a, uh, of a much smaller body, body type, okay? But most of the time, just leave it there. And it will move around, but once you've got everything in there, so do pack it out. That's a very, very important thing. There's nothing weirder and worse than looking at um, completely empty haversacks and completely empty valises, okay? So we've got that in, in position now. Right, that is pretty much set for trench work and into uh, the first day of the song. As we move on, a couple of things may change, and one of them will be the advent of where your um, rain capes and things like that go, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this rain cape up. The mystical spare set of hands comes into shot. Thank you very much, Mike. There we go. So what we do with the rain cape, so this is a, a, this is a, a model of 1917 uh, rain cape. So this is a rubberized one from What Price Glory. Uh, just fold it up in any way that makes it into a nice sort of uh, crisp shape. So this is gonna be like this. And what I do is I place this nice and tight like this, there into this position here, okay? So you can see that. Then the next bit I do, is I take my, there we go, I'll take my mess tin, which is here. Most mess tins will have a cover. This one hasn't at the moment because the cover, the button flew off of it recently, so I have to uh, repair that. So we've got the mess tin, and what you're gonna see, and you can watch this cleverly, we're gonna put the whole thing together. Now the trick with this is, having stuff inside your pack will make it less likely to rattle around and less likely to fall off. So we should be able to, there we go, that's better. So you should be able to see that. Now, we're gonna roll that over and get that as tight as we can get it because there's nothing worse than your rain cape coming out whilst you are marching. A uh, trick with this to do as well is get a mate to do it whilst it's on you. Because all webbing can be adjusted with a second person. That's very, very important. There we go. Okay, so that's nice and tight in there, okay? Uh, same, so similar works when you've got the uh, 1914, uh, right up to 1916 ground sheets. Uh, those rubberized ground sheets are effective, but this model of 1917 one, the rain shroud is really, really fantastic. Um, those ground sheets are, yeah, they're all right, but what is good about them is they, they roll completely flat. So when you packed your stuff in your haversack, that'll work very, very effectively. Last thing we've got is uh, wire cutters. Uh, a lot of the time you'll see wire cutters in the pictures. Uh, this is a, a set of wire cutters, that's an original set from 17. Um, the, um, the ones that we've got here, they're stamped there from Soldier of Fortune. One of the things that Soldier of Fortune will insist on doing, which is totally bizarre, is incorrectly dating stuff. They've got K Canvas 1914. Rub it off, uh, particularly on things like their, um, on their SBR gas masks. Just get rid of it, like SBR gas mask marked 1914. Yeah, go figure that one. Um, these have no standardized position upon your body as to where to put them. So they need to be in a place that's nice and easily accessible. I tend to put them uh, on the front so they're easily accessible. So I'll just hook them through here and they've got a little connector like that. And I'll just slip them through there or I'll slip them through here. So like with this one here, so that slips through. Like that. There we go. As simple as that. You can put them on the back, um, so there or there. Um, it's fairly simple as to where to put those on. If you're using the old um, sort of scissor arm ones, uh, you'll just need to thrust them through your uh, through your webbing. Okay, and that is pretty much a full set of 1916 order of eight pattern webbing. All right, thank you very much, guys. It's, uh, it's been a tricky one. When you're putting together your 08 webbing, do remember that everybody else has the same problems as you. 
the best and most surefire way of getting your webbing uh, right is by spending time in a 30 degrees Celsius tent, uh, swearing loudly as, as, as hard as you can to try and put these things together with friends. Oh, it webbing can be frustrating, but once you know it, it becomes incredibly easy and super intuitive. It is the best set of webbing constructed. So make sure you've got that. And when you're doing your Blanco, which we did for the last video, you'll now know how to put it back together. All right, thanks very much, guys. It's been a two mic production. Good luck.